Nutcracker syndrome and Mae-Thurner syndrome are two special syndromes that affect the deep veins inside the body. They both are quite similar in that a normal vein is being crushed by something else. In the Nutcracker syndrome, it's the left renal vein or the vein from the left kidney which is actually crushed by an artery going over the top of it, pushing backwards on the vein and half blocking it. In Mae-Thurner syndrome, it's a very similar thing. Once again, it's an artery pushing on a vein in the pelvis. Funnily enough, in both Nutcracker syndrome and Mae-Thurner syndrome, it's mainly on the left-hand side, and this comes from the embryology of how veins develop. In most people, the vein system in the inside is on the right side, and all the veins on the left have to go over the midline into that main vein called the inferior vena cava. Because of the asymmetry of the veins, in other words, because they have to go across the midline, that means they are exposed to being pushed on by arteries. And the two classic ones are the nutcracker up by the kidney or Mayferner syndrome down in the pelvis. Nutcracker syndrome affecting the renal vein or the kidney vein makes the blood dam up in the left kidney, but also because of a special junction also makes the left ovarian vein difficult to drain and sometimes can dilate it. If that left ovarian vein dilates, it can cause pelvic congestion syndrome, although it must be said that most people with pelvic congestion syndrome don't have nutcracker syndrome. Mayferner syndrome is very worrying because it pushes on the big vein coming from the left leg and can get so tight it can even cause a massive deep vein thrombosis. Both nutcracker syndrome and Mayferner syndrome can be very difficult to diagnose. As with all venous disease, the first indication, the first test, really should be a colour flow duplex ultrasound scan performed by a specialist vascular technologist. In Nutcracker syndrome, because it's up by the kidney vein, it may be possible to use an MRI or a CT scan to really see what's going on. The problem with CT and MRI is you can certainly see veins and you can see if there's compression, but you can't see flow, so neither of them are really a gold standard. In Mayferner syndrome, although you can use MRI or you can use CT scanning, probably the gold standard is a thing called IVUS, which is intravascular ultrasound. And that's where a little ultrasound probe is pushed up inside the vein to see exactly what the calibre of the vein is. However, sometimes when these veins are deep inside the body, we have to just put several tests together to try and find out what's going on. And that sometimes isn't a gold standard test that tells us everything. The treatment of Nutcracker syndrome can be quite complex and really needs to be discussed on a case-by-case -case basis. Sometimes it's possible to use a stent, sometimes it has to be open surgery, so really there is no general opinion as to what is best for that. Mayferner syndrome now can almost always be treated by a stent. That's putting up a little metal tube which is expanded inside the vein to hold it open. Pelvic vein embolization is a sophisticated but simple pinhole procedure performed in an outpatient setting, much like a dental surgery. Pelvic congestion syndrome really affects women more than it affects men, although it is possible for men to get a form of pelvic congestion syndrome. The complexity of pelvic congestion syndrome is really down to the complexity of the female pelvis.